All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, as you can see in the subject title, I'm going to tie the brown magic leech. This is a great little still water pattern that I fish quite frequently in the spring and fall, uh, especially around here in the interior of BC uh, and quite quite a few lakes. It's a good searching pattern if you fish it in a uh, out of a boat or at the dock. Uh, good good lines to fish this fly on are a full sink, probably in a type three or a sink tip. Uh, it's a great searching pattern before those crony hatches start in early mornings or uh, if the water temperature kind of falls below 50 Fahrenheit, trout really start keying in on leeches. Uh, and so hopefully this pattern lands in your uh, in your fly box. All right, let's get started. Hey, we're recording, look at us. Boom. All right, let's zoom in on this little fly. So fly for a white guy. Focus in on that beautiful little thing. All right, so today we are using a, oh, Daiichi 1260, size 10. You can see it's got a bit of a curve to the hook there. Super nice little hook. And for the bead, we're using a metallic brown, metallic coffee bead and a 1 8th. Uh, you can also use a 764th. Works good on this size of hook as well. Uh, for thread, we're going to use a UTC black in 70. And so for starting the fly, I'm just going to wrap a couple thread wraps down the shank of the hook. And stop just after where the point of the hook Starts just up down there. I'm gonna cut the little tag of thread off. All right, so this fly has a marabou tail. I like using um, a few colors of marabous for my leeches, uh, browns, blacks. Um, right now I'm using a brown. Uh, I can also use like a, a maroon red, uh, but for the most part, those three colors are, are the most popular ones. All right, so for the marabou tail, I usually measure the length of my tail based off the length of the shank of the hook. So basically from where the thread kind of ends here to just before the eye of the hook. And so I've just grabbed a piece of marabou feather and just kind of pinched a couple feathers or strands in between my fingers there. And I'm just going to measure it just a little longer than the shank of the hook is how I usually like it. Everyone else has their own little preference, but I'm just gonna do that distance there. I'm just gonna cut it and then tie it in there. So let's pinch it between my fingers and the back. Do a couple nice little tight thread wraps and just lock it in. Leave your thread just at the back there. All right. Uh, for an added little finish to the fly, I like putting uh, a strand of flashaboo, uh, and this is a cranberry flashaboo. Most fly shops sell this stuff. Comes in a bunch of strands there. Now this is a cranberry flashaboo, kind of looks like a bit like a, a red. It's hard to see right now. I'll zoom in on it later. And I'm just going to tie it in there, uh, kind of the same length as my, my tail. I'm going to tie it on on one side there, and I'll do the other side afterwards. All right, so a couple thread wraps, just lock it in, and then I fold it back over itself there, and then give it a couple more wraps to lock it in again, and then cut it at the end, and then do it back on the other side. For the next step, I'm using a little dubbing twister, dubbing spinner. If you don't have one of these, you should definitely pick one up. It's perfect for tying little leeches with uh, things like Arizona Simi Seal or any sort of dubbing that you use to tie your leeches. Uh, you can see that there's two little, uh, little hooks on each side there. And how you use it um, is you just 
hook the thread underneath one side, loop it around, and then hook the other side. Spread some, uh, some thread off the bobbin there, and then give yourself a good little distance. Usually I go for four to five inches of loop there, and then you tie it back in on, your, on the shank of the hook there. All right, bring that thread to the front. Do a little whip finish, I'm just using my fingers here, just to hold the thread up at the front there. And then set it down. Perfect. All right. So for the body material of this leech today, I'm gonna to use a red and black uh, Arizona semi-seal, not in the um, mega semi seal I find that those fibers are too long for a leech and they kind of gum up the tail and they don't really move too well in the uh, in the water for me so a good tip that uh, I wish I knew before I started tying a bunch of these was when you grab a bunch of uh, semi seal you pull it apart and in little clumps so the strands kind of stack horizontally that will really help in uh, giving the leech a good profile when you uh, when you're wrapping this stuff on. So I'll just thread that into my loop. And uh, for the most part, my leeches aren't too aren't too bushy. Uh, I prefer leeches that are a little sparser. I think they fish they fish better and they have more movement in the water and they don't get all bunched up. Alright, so my loops full there. I'm going to pinch the bottom just where the uh, Arizona semi seal finishes. At the bottom. I'm going to give the dubbing twister a couple spins. Just like that. And hold the dubbing, dubbing twister there. Hang the thread down and then let your fingers go and you'll see that it wraps just like that. Want to give it a couple extra wraps just to lock it in there. All right, and then for a brush, you can buy commercial brushes or you can use a standard toothbrush like this one. Um, I just cut the bristles off the end of that to make it shorter, a little stiffer, uh, and I'm just gonna brush the, the Arizona Semi Seal. Just kind of get all the loose fibers out of there, keep the ones that are locked in. If you find that you're losing a, too much material, Maybe uh, try a couple more twists next time just to make sure all the material's locked in there. All right, just a nice long strand of semi seal. All right, and then once you're ready, if you have a rotary vise, feel free to rotate the vise to apply the semi seal on. Um, as you're wrapping it, a good note is to Brush the fibers back with your one hand while you're wrapping it, just to make sure the fibers lay down in the right direction and your fly doesn't look like a, a bushy blob. All right. And if you found that you didn't tie enough material in or that you're a little short, don't worry, you can always make another loop with your dubbing twister and just continue from where you stopped. We're going all the way to the front on this guy. Stacking all those nicely in the back there. There you go. All right. Grab your thread. Lock that down with a couple wraps. Two or three should be good. A couple in front maybe. And then just cut the loop nice and close. Just like that. All right, now that we're there, uh, grab your whip finishing tool again. Give it a couple more whip finishes. Two or three again, just to lock that all in. All right, and the last step, I add uh, just a bit of glue uh, to the actual thread of, uh, to the actual thread before I complete the fly. And so I'll just kind of brush on a little bit or just apply a bit to the thread there. 
just kind of like, or just about the first inch. And then I'll pull the fibers back again with my one hand, wrap that glue nice and snug just at the head of the fly, just find the bead there, just to lock all the thread down and make sure my fly doesn't fall apart too soon. All right, and then after that, I'll do one more little whip finish. Cobble turns again, pull that tight, and then cut the thread off the bottom. Right. For added aesthetic pleasure, you can brush the fibers back and forward, just kind of pulling all the excess stuff that might be caught in there. Brush that back. Couple little spins. All right, and that is the magic brown leech. Hope you add this to your uh, Stillwater arsenal, and uh, hope it catches you a couple fish. Thanks for watching.